Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 19 of the F123 Lancia career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the US Grand Prix at Texas, of course. If you missed that on last video uh, that went live last week from Qatar, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, our second sprint weekend in a row. We've got a lot of racing action to get through later on in the campaign. Championship-wise, well, Charles Leclerc now with a 12-point lead over Max Verstappen, but really you could argue anyone down to Oscar Piastri is surely still fancying their chances late on this season. We're still in 11th. We need a bit of a miracle uh, to close up to Lance Stroll, but we, we should be safe from Alex Albon and Pierre Gasly behind us. The same can be said uh, for our sixth place overall in the Constructors' Championship. The big battle to watch out for uh, Alpine and Williams tied on 22 points apiece a little bit further back. But yeah, trying to get ourselves ready for Season 2 of this career mode. We definitely need to take some new engine components this weekend as well, of course. Um, but yeah, obviously, if you're new around here, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well uh, for more Formula 1 related content. Got a lot of plans as we head into 2024, which I cannot wait to showcase to you all as well. But yeah, let's get into it. It's US Grand Prix time. Well, as we established then, penultimate sprint weekend of the season here from Kota. Uh, and yeah, I must admit this track actually uh, has been quite a happy hunting ground for us before inside F123. Feel like my pace uh, can be very, very strong around here. So hopefully we can try and have a good qualifying session, of course. Um, we we've got those grid penalties, so we'll be starting from the back, ready for the main event either way. So, oh, if I can get a better line than that down in turn one. Uh, the goal is just to try and go all out guns blazing, ready for the sprint, and then see what we can do uh, in the feature race or the main event starting from the back of the field. Planning a few changes and tweaks, obviously, uh, for season two of this series, which I really hope you guys are going to enjoy, um, which hopefully we'll see some sprint racing getting changed around. Well, this lap, of course, is basically ruined at turn one. So, really, we're just setting ourselves up with a bit of a banker. Uh, ready for our final last-ditch attempt here in the one qualifying session as we make our way through the final corner. A little bit of front lock in there as we try and keep the car between the curbs. And a 133.9, despite that mistake, still leaves us in P12. And heading back out then for our second run. The skies above looking very overcast. So we've got to get on with it now at the end of qualifying here at Kota. Um, apparently, yeah, it is not meant to start raining within the next couple of minutes. So I'm yeah, not too worried about being out there right at the end of the session. Far more interested in trying to get another good time on the board. Will we see the rain start to fall this lap? Five minutes left on the clock is really struggling. What was that down in turn one? Just no throttle. Well, that was bizarre. We just had no throttle down through the midway point of Turn 1. So now we've got even more to try and find. Making our way then in towards the final few corners. We have been able to drag the car back into the green. But what a disappointing session this has turned into. Rain now starting to fall as we make our way through the penultimate corner. Can we get it slowed down through the final turn? Yes, we can. So rain isn't going to affect me too badly. And we go up into 10th place then. Alfa Romeo flying in a 9th and P12. Yeah, other cars now heading out onto the track. But surely we're locked into this 10th. We go Charles Leclerc. Pole position then here for the US Grand Prix. Championship leader. That is a big, big moment for him. But two thousandths of a second between myself and Valtteri Bottas. It will be Gasly, ourselves, Bottas and Albon that are desperate to try and snooker away a point or two from this sprint race. Uh, Stroll having a bit of a nightmare in qualifying, and both McLarens way down the order here. They might now be out of the championship hunt. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. Only 
completed the Dry the Grid order for today's exciting sprint. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, pitching out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Russell, Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Gasly, Bottas, Firestarter, Albert, Joe, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Norris, Magnussen, Ricardo, Ocon, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sergeant, and the reserve driver rounds off the grid. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We will soon find out. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Well, here we are then, ready for the sprint race here at Kota. I am looking forward to this one, but we are just going to absolutely take all the risk possible today. We're going to start on the softs and, you know, see if we end up with a safety car, something like that. Of course, unless we win, we're going to be starting the main event from the back of the field anyway. So I'm not too worried about that there. And everyone around me on the mediums needs to give us a bit of a better fighting chance. Right, let's do this thing then. Ready on the grid for the US Grand Prix. Five red lights. Lights out and away we go. There is Gasly. He's not really gone anywhere off the start. So we will say thank you very much. Hamilton as well struggling as we get to the inside of absolutely everybody. Up at turn one. Oh, Alonso didn't quite know if he was going to give me any room there. As that's Carlos Sainz trying to go back around the outside then. So we were three wide. With both of the Spaniards there, a little bit of use of DRS, uh, sorry, ERS, as we make our way into the S's for the first time. But look at that, the dream start here at the USGP Sprint Race. Up at a P6 we go in our mighty Lancia car that has just, yeah, really come on strong in the second half of this campaign. But I I've said it so many times this season, we've had so many opportunities to score points this year, and most of them have uh, gotten away from us, so we, we certainly will not count our chickens until we get to the end of the GP today. You can see already, though, trying to apply some pressure to Carlos Sainz as we make our way down this back straight. Will we be able to have a look down the inside of the Ferrari? We're certainly going to try it, and yes, we will. They're a robust move, and into P5 then by the end of lap one here. A brilliant start at Texas. Well, Lewis Hamilton then starting this Grand Prix from P3. Five red lights on the grid, and the Merc, he's going to put the throttle down and just go nowhere off the line there. Lucky that he didn't hit the anti-stall, but there we go. Mercedes, Ferrari, Aston Martins, and you'll even see ourselves flying up the inside there by the time he gets down into turn one. He's very lucky, actually, to avoid all the contact um, that happened just in front of him. But Hamilton, a nightmare start then here in Texas on a track that he's often done so well around. He's way down the order. I can see Perez then at the front of the field, still trying to apply some pressure uh, to Charles Leclerc. I'm sure Red Bull are going to try and get both their drivers to work together. Don't allow the Monegasque the advantage late on in this campaign. But, yeah, probably, you know, sensibly, lap one is going to be our highlight of this sprint race. After that, it is just going to be trying to defend from as many cars as humanly possible. But, yeah, I've opted once more of a really, really high downforce just to try and give us the sticking power through that first sector. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're probably going to see Sainz fly out past me once the DRS is enabled. Yellow's out. Someone's got issues a little bit further behind. Don't say it's Aaron Barnes again. Surely he can't be having his third mechanical failure in a row. It is! Aaron Barnes is at yet another race here. He retired from both the main event and the sprint in Qatar and is out of the sprint here at Kota as well. Justice for Aaron Barnes in F1 23. Oh, a little moment there. That's annoying. I was just about to say how we've been trying to find our Zen early on in this sprint race because we've been doing a very, very good job keeping up with the big dogs here, but that's going to now knock us out of the DRS. And now Carlos Sainz might sense an opportunity to try and find a way around me there. It can turn around so quickly in the world of Formula 1. And here comes Carlos, getting closer and closer. But this time round, not close enough. Yeah, that, that one small moment there was really broken our rhythm 
in this GP. We are dropping back at a rapid rate of knots from those front runners. And the more worrying thing is this train of cars behind us. Uh, actually, no, it's only about three cars. That's all right. I thought it extended all the way back um, towards, I think it's Daniel Ricciardo in the Alpha Towery. Like I said at the start of this one, the tyre wear was going to really fall apart towards the end of this race. And yet Sainz, Alonso and Hamilton breathing down my neck. Which can only hope that we can stay ahead of that Williams a little bit further back. I just desperately want a point from this. Oh, big mistake there through the penultimate corner. Sainz now to the inside as we make our way through the final turn. And the Spaniard there just going to park it. On the apex, he's going to have the DRS off the corner, but we're going to try and get on the battery. Not going to take this line down unless I absolutely have to. Oh, Sainz, though. A little bit of a weave there. So George Russell then potentially in the wars late on in the day, but yeah, Verstappen has got a second lead further up the road, so I don't think Sainz, Alonso and I are going to be able to get back with the Merc. Boy, oh boy, we are struggling. This was a big old gamble. Will it pay off? All right, come on then. Let's get a run on Sainz back down the back straight. This probably is going to be our last attempt if we can't get the Spaniard here. I'm not going to get another opportunity. And yeah, we just have not got enough battery to really try and launch it. Let's not forget as well, of course, Ferrari giving us power units on a very, very good deal. Oh, yellows. Who's got issues further behind? We've almost run the car off the road. And see who it is. I, I think it's a back marker. Well, George Russell and Max Verstappen have been having a titanic battle over the last couple of laps, but it's cost them both a lot of time. And I think Charles Leclerc is going to do enough in the sprint race here to walk away with the victory. We were sticking super close to Carlos Sainz there, but just not at enough pace to try and get back ahead of the Spaniard before the end of this one. Hamilton, though, seems to have found a way past his old sparring partner. In Fernando Alonso, but as we make our way in towards the final few corners here, it again is going to steer in Charles Leclerc's favour at the moment. This is the perfect way to kickstart his weekend here in Travis County, Texas, rounding his way in towards the final corners. Is this going to be Ferrari's season? Charles Leclerc takes one step closer to that crown. He'll win the sprint race here in Austin, Texas. Through the final corner, we'll go. We are going to walk away with P6 in the end. A couple of points on the board before we start the main event from the back. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. So let's see how the driver's standings have changed. Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. Well, that wraps up Sprint. All that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, there we go. Charles Leclerc, Sprint race winner here in Texas. Just Sergio Perez half a second back, but could not do anything in the end there. And Verstappen will make it a double Red Bull podium. I'm sure they'll be looking on how they can get ahead of the Ferrari in the main event tomorrow. It does mean Leclerc, though, with a 14-point lead now as we head into the GP, but just 12 back behind Lance Stroll for us. We, we could still potentially try and do something against the Canadian before the end of the season here. But, yeah, there we go. That sprint race done and dusted. Starting from the back, ready for the main event. We need to stay out of trouble, but I'm going to try and get the elbows out. F1 is so popular in these parts now that we race here three times a year, but let's give full respect to Cota, or the Circuit of the Americas if you prefer, which laid the foundations for it. It still remains the United States Grand Prix. It's the Circuit of the Americas then. Situated 14 miles outside the great city of Austin, this is a 3.6 mile lap with 20 corners, 10 to the left and 10 to the right. Top speeds are around 200 miles per hour. Overtaking opportunities are available in turns one and 12, especially with that rear wing DRS wide open. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Russell, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Bottas, Gasly, Sonoda, Stroll, Sainz, 
Magnuson, Ocon. Sergeant, Albert. Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri. Joe, Ricardo. Firestarter and the reserve driver rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Well, I believe that is eight cars with grid penalties then here for the US Grand Prix. And sadly, we still find ourselves starting right at the back of the lot of them here, side by side with my teammate Aaron Barnes, ready for the main event here. 28 more laps from the Circuit of the Americas. I'm looking forward to this one. Like I said, we know we've got some good pace in the car, so fingers crossed we can get our elbows out and see what we can do. However, not so confident in the tyre life. Uh, those soft compound tyres really did get chewed up in the sprint yesterday. So we're going to go on the hards, to, uh, sorry, the mediums today. Looks like not many drivers have joined us, though. Already Ricardo inside the bottom five. Let's do this thing, though. U.S. Grand Prix, five red lights here from Texas. It's a mighty long haul, but it is lights out, and away we go there. And despite the harder tyres, still able to get around the outside of Zhou Guanyu on the run in towards Selmon. Lance Stroll looks like he didn't go anywhere there, so we'll get stuck behind the American of Logan Sargent. But you know what? We won't be stuck behind him for very long. Oh, Stroll there. What's going on with the Canadian big fish tail? At the first corner, and well, he's really helped me out there. Potentially now my biggest championship rival as we head into these last few Grand Prix. And well, Lance Stroll has allowed me to gain six places then off the start. So five in the sprint race yesterday, six in the main event today. We absolutely love to see it. And yeah, you can see there, Charles Leclerc once again at the top of the table. George Russell, clearly Mercedes, able to get those issues sorted as I was very scared then that I was going to run to the back of this. Uh, sorry, Alex Alden. Not going to happen, though. But, yeah, as I was saying, George Russell issues in the sprint race. I think he's got those fixed, though, and he's now up into P2. So, potentially providing Charles Leclerc with a rear gunner. There's AI very, very quick down the straight. Alban just trying to be measured on the brakes there down at the end of the middle sector. But, yeah, this has been the dream opening lap. To this Grand Prix. Couldn't have sensibly asked for much more. As you can see there, the hat of Kevin Magnussen almost into the points. Ooh, that was almost game over on lap one. And that dream start I spoke about, well, it's it's not been so dreamy now. It was side by side with Oscar Piastri. Of course, last weekend's double winner. Oh, come on. Just really got the elbows out there with Oscar. Uh, and we will hang on then. So, not quite. Well, hello. Logan Sargent down the inside at the final corner. Very aggressive dive bomb maneuver by the Williams car. But we're going to be drag racing with him back up in towards turn one. Will Sargent be able to pull off the move? Will it only be three places gained on the opening lap? Still trying to get the throttle down on the exit. The corner will stay down the inside of the Williams there. And good wheel to wheel racing with the American. Have scored points here IRL. Um, but yeah, not so sure he's going to require a miracle to do that today. Here comes Sergeant again, though, down the inside. That Williams is looking very, very racy in a straight line today. And we know we were struggling with it all weekend long. We'll hold it firm, though, again. Well, Sergeant, try as he might, cannot find a way around me. Away well, we go. First time, then, with some DRS. Nico Hulkenberg under pressure. No idea how he didn't get DRS on the cars in front of him. Apparently he hasn't. Can we have a look around the outside? We've done it on the American driver. And now we will do it on the American team there. Big squeeze as we make our way into the final sector. But nice to know we can still overtake. And up then to the back of what is a rather large train. Lance Stroll making up the rear of it. And McLaren. Don't know what's happened to their paces this weekend. But it seems like this uh, group really does extend right the, up, right the way up towards, I believe, Gasly. Uh, and it must obviously be Lando Norris there as well, a little bit late on the brakes. Stroll will try and get the switch on me off the exit of the corner, but it yeah, certainly won't be allowing that to happen as we make our way once more into the final sector. Never expected round the outside to be my best place to overtake here, but we'll absolutely take it. What was depressing is just seeing uh, my teammate Aaron Barnes dropping away from the rear of the field so, so quickly inside this game, but yeah, Albon now trying to push along Yuki Tsunoda, and uh, the Alpha Tauri, of course, did very, very well, uh, kind of just damaged limitation, of course, then gained the load from all of the grid penalties there, so there's quite a few drivers, actually, 
that are floating around the top 10 is to the inside of Alban will go big send at the bottom of the hill almost into the back of Yuki Tsunoda that one I'm, I'm genuinely quite proud of that was well timed we got the car slowed down we didn't run him wide we did certainly certainly put him in his place come on then Tsunoda let's just try and continue making these overtakes happen so we get very good traction off of the corner but then trying to match the AI down the straights is not so easy here as a wheel to wheel like Senna and Mansell all those years ago but we'll get past another one so the points are right there it's the second of the Alfa Romeos of Bottas in P10 so Alfa Romeo could be on for a big payday here or still I believe tied with Haas uh, for P9 in the championship aren't they Oh, no! No, 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 no! Great. And we've got a red flag. Wonderful. Oh, we are in trouble. No idea what that was about. We just dropped the rear end out of nowhere, it seemed like. And now we've got a red flag in this GP. Looks like we're going to be restarting this one then on a set of hard tyres to try and get to the end. But yeah, that's been a bit of a disaster. We've got a little bit of side pod damage, which hopefully won't cost us too much. But five red lights then once again. It's going to be lights out and away we go. Mark's just talking twaddle. As look at that. What's going on at the front? They're almost five wide there. As we make our way back into turn one, I think there's been some big moves. I'm going to get turned. Who's just turned me? Down at turn one. We have been sent back around there. There must have been contact with Nico Hulkenberg in this Grand Prix. And suddenly... Our race goes from bad to worse there. Aaron Barnes into the lo lofty heights of P19. Sonoda is out of the GP. But what was that down at Turn 1? Well, after a bit of investigative work then, it's actually Logan Sargent that I believe causes the error here. You can see Aaron Barnes just in front. Doesn't get a particularly good start on the run down in towards Turn 1 there. Down the middle will go. And you can see there, just gets a little bit sandwiched. And, well, we just didn't quite turn in as early as those other cars around us, and Sargent will send both Hulkenberg and I to the Shadow Realm and, and basically come out of that scot-free. That's not what you want to hear. We could be in some big trouble towards the end of this one. There's Hulkenberg already trying to look back past my teammate Aaron Barnes. Defend, Aaron. Defend for all your worth. But yeah, we're going to have to monitor engine temperatures then between now and the end of the GP. It's just such a weird couple of incidents that all happened at once. Points now are going to be very difficult to come by. Let's see if we can try and get the power down off the exit of the hairpin. Yes, we will to the inside of Hulkenberg will go. The AI like to trip over that curbing as they make their way out into the back straight. Hulkenberg might have some side pod damage as well. So here we go, Aaron Barnes trying to defend from me for the outside of my teammates. I've only just noticed they put me on mediums. So we're probably not even going to be able to get to the end of this Grand Prix on this set of tyres. Why, why on earth did the team do that? Well, it's F123. There's your answer. Sergeant then, unlucky to not pick up some DRS off of Zhou Guan Yu in front of him. Alfa Romeo would have been well and truly screwed because of this restart there. They were running so well early on in this GP, but Sergeant again trying to give me a squeeze. Bit of deja vu between myself and the American. And just like last time, we'll make it the position ours. Here we go. You can see a battle of the Australians raging on just in front of me. Okay, that floor damage is apparently getting worse and worse, so that doesn't bode well. Uh, let's have a look on the MFD. Yeah, it's it's just it, well, it's certainly not going to get any better, is it? What, what else can we do apart from just drive the car? Here we go. Joe Guan Yu now. Daniel Ricciardo is really struggling this stage of the afternoon. Can we try and find a way to capitalise? As there's a little wheel bang in between the Alpha Tauri and the Alpha Romeo and Ricardo this time will get his elbows out. Make our way into the S's once again. Despite the damage, the downforce we've got on this car still allowing us to make gains. It's certainly been my best place to try and make overtakes all afternoon so far. We might try and make another one then. Joe Guan Yu now this time a little bit vulnerable and Daniel Ricardo might be susceptible to a pass by the pair of us Making big gains on the Australian to the inside will go. Straight line breaking as best as possible. Oh, we get turned in on again. What are the AI doing today? We get a warning for a collision with Ricardo there. 
There were the car on the inside. I don't think there was a lot else we really could have done. But it's a double overtake. We're through as we cross half distance. Oh, yellow's out. Someone in front of us. Oh! Great. <laughs> oh, no! Alvin, safety car's been deployed. That works quite nicely for me. Well, I was really hoping we could try and get a red flag at this stage of the afternoon, but it's not going to happen. But yeah, safety car is not much worse for me. Uh, it allows us obviously to box, uh, get onto that new set of the soft compound tyres there, but just came through okay, turn one and nowhere to go. It also allows us to get rid of this penalty, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, soft then to try and see us to the end. Slow down, slow down. Your delta's negative, which means you're going too fast. Reduce your pace. Oh yeah, I believe that's Ocon's second, uh, sorry, Alvin even second spin of the weekend. But more interestingly, no one else opting to peel into the pit lane then under this safety car. I'd be trying to convince Aaron Barnes to do it. Um, yeah, no one else into the pit lane then. So we're going to be at the back of the field once again in this GP. But we're going to be on much fresher, softer tyres with about eight or nine laps to go here. Could there suddenly be an opportunity towards the end of this one? There's new front wing going onto the car as well. Hopefully... Oh, this is a really long stop. Okay, they haven't go, served go, the go. penalty, Perfect though. Job on the turn in there, mate. Looks like a nice stop time. We're happy with that one. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Let's go. Have they patched it on this game now that you cannot serve the penalties under safety car? I do hope not. Safety car in then at the end of lap 19. So we're going to have nine racing laps to go then here from Kota. And we're going to be on softer, fresher tyres than the rest of the field. However feel like that five second penalty is going to come back and haunt me there was almost into the back of my teammate to try and get the power down through the penultimate corner let's go racing again then and immediately past Aaron Barnes will go Alvin now as well with a five second penalty as both of us have span uh, today and and been penalized for it I feel like it's a little bit harsh for both Alex Alvin and myself but I mean look at the grip we've got Apparently trying to push the Williams off of the first corner, but yeah, surely, despite the damage we've still obviously sustained this afternoon, there'll be opportunities towards the end of this as well, almost to the inside of Alex Alvin there. Got to just be patient with it still, but need to make moves. Oh, that's going to be a second warning, though. We've got no more of those today, so we're going to have to be really careful as well. Down the inside of the Williams there. We'll just slide down his inside at the hairpin. And we try and get a run on Hulkenberg on the exit. Would have probably stood a better chance there had I not short shifted so aggressively to the inside oh, of Hulkenberg who clearly wants to go defensive from me. How many times have we overtaken some of these back markers today? I feel like we've been making overtakes non-stop and yet still really have not gone anywhere this afternoon. And the inside of Hulk and we'll switch it to the inside of Sergeant as well. Through the next corner. Some of these back markers really have got nothing against us. As oh, Ricardo. Well, that was again. Second weekend in a row. I've done a Ricardo style move on the Australian himself. And yeah, you can just see the pace advantage we've got. It won't last. We will really start to struggle towards the end of this race as Joe Guan Yu desperate to swing defensive through the final corner. And that's going to be another one then. Easy work off this restart on the back inside the top 15. To P15 now. That's P15. Esteban Ocon then next up on the old hit list and oh yeah that safety car couldn't have come out at a much more perfect time for me maybe a couple of laps later but yeah maybe I want to believe there's still a chance here for a decent result with Bottas now up inside that top 10 he is cooking this afternoon out for a mayo pretty have found something here as yeah McLaren on the other hand whoa a little bit of lock up there into the side of Oscar Piastri, but he's had a nightmare weekend after the highs of Qatar. Penalties have dogged Oscar Piastri and, yeah, McLaren. Well, Lando Norris now up to P5, but he has made the best of a bad situation here. Can we get round the other Haskar once more? Lance Stroll, another one separating us from the points. Not enough grip there. We've got to be so careful of the track limits still. It's out of the final corner. Put the throttle down. Okay. Surely this will be the run. 
The RS now re-enabled as well as to the outside of Magnuson, who runs himself and myself deep into the corner. Oh, we get a big moment of oversteer as well and almost collect us again. But we are through. Here we go then, trying to get a run on Sir Lancelot. Seem to already be struggling a little bit on these tyres. But down the inside will go of the Canadian. He's still on mediums then, so Stroll's really tried to go aggressive on that strategy. But yeah, kind of my luck today lies in the balance with Valtteri Bottas. He can slow some of these guys down towards the end. There might be a window for us to pull out that five second gap. But I've got to get to the front of this queue ASAP. Closing in on Carlos Sainz on the run back down towards turn one. Down the inside will go again of the Spaniard. And we will make it through up into P10. That's probably the most difficult one we'll have to get through of this group. But that was a risky move at turn one. No, okay, it's over. Cream's dead. Absolutely heartbreaking right towards the end of the US Grand Prix as soon as we get back in the points. It's completely gone away from us. Not going to stop me though trying to get a run on Pierre Gasly late on as we make our way down the back straight to the outside of the Frenchman. Oh, a lot of cadence break in there to get the car tucked in. Down the inside off the exit. Come on, give me some room. Thank you. Say that. We, we haven't exactly been given the AI room on the exit. So it's all yellows out. I think that's Hulkenberg out of the GP. And that is a disappointing end to Haas's home, way, uh, home race. Well, this is potentially a massive day for Alfa Romeo. Valtteri Bottas running in P8 still. Zhou Guan Yu was doing so well early on. Unfortunately, has dropped back late in the afternoon, but to the outside and past the Alfa Romeo. Don't want to make contact with him if I can avoid it, and we will swoop through. So can we still somehow pull out eight seconds over Pierre Gasly? We've already got over two seconds in the space of a lap. Tyres are completely fried with just two laps to go. Might see Gasly now trying to make a move on Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, the Frenchman flying as he makes his way down the back straight. So I'm hoping this doesn't all unravel for Valtteri Bottas towards the end of the afternoon. Can the Alfa Romeo get back to the outside of the Alpine? He'll have the inside for the next corner. And Bottas, we love to see it getting his elbows out. Do I potentially work as a rear gunner for Bottas in these last two laps? Because points, well, they're not going our way today. Gasly diving it back up the inside of the Alfa Romeo, and I think he's pulled off the move. And it, yep, Gasly is through. Okay, as things stand right now, we'll be 11th in the championship. Oh, here goes Gasly back down the inside of turn one. Pierre, he's had enough. He does not want to sit behind me towards the end of this race. I was actually trying to work out P9, who's winning. P9, keep going. That's Gasly ahead. Okay, they're on old hard tyres. Bottas is behind you. Okay, push, push. Gap to the car behind. 1.0 seconds. Okay, they're on old hard tyres. Okay, so gap to the leader is 13.6 seconds. Okay, this is your final lap. Final lap of the race. Oh, always good to know that. I know the gap to the leader, but I don't know who's leading this race. F123 in a nutshell there, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, on this final lap, though, it's, it's a Red Bull 1-2 either way. Just intrigued to know which one it's going to be, because Charles Leclerc, despite starting from pole, just like he did in the real-life US Grand Prix, he's had an absolute stinker here. And it's looking like he's only going to walk home for a P6, so he might not even be in the lead of the championship. But here goes Bottas down the inside as well. In towards the final few corners, we are just dropping positions like a stone on this final lap tyre where warning light has flashed up once again. So you can see sliding this thing around all over the place. But around in the final corner then, I think I, if my money's on Verstappen, I think he's going to have won. No, don't do that again. It is Max Verstappen who takes the win here at Cota and doing so, I believe, will retake the lead of the Drivers' World Championship. Perez is going to come home for P2, and we're not even going to finish in the points on the road there as Oscar Piastri down the inside through the final corner. We'll just about hang on in front of him. As they climb out of the car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. So, Natalie, what made the difference out there today? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now.
Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. It's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Today's performance means that Max Verstappen now owns the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on Driver of the Day, Natalie Pinkham. Come on, who do you pick? Often, my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. Red Bull pull further ahead in the standings. There is also a strong showing from the Mercedes team today as they make their way up the standings. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, the end of the US GP here, and a pretty disappointing one once again for ourselves there. But Verstappen, I'm sure, very, very happy with a big, big result there. Red Bull found a way by, and they will take a 1-2 there, followed home by both Mercedes. Lando Norris, yeah, McLaren, they were looking woeful this weekend, but he worked his way back through uh, to pick up a top five finish there. Leclerc, Alonso, Gasly, Bottas, and Carlos Sainz rounding out our top ten today. And yeah, with our penalties, uh, we ended up down in P16 there. Very, very disappointed uh, with the way the weekend unfolded there. It does mean championship-wise, Verstappen now a four-point swing at the top of the table. I mean, you could probably still argue that down to Sainz uh, are hopeful for a championship, but I think more sensibly now, uh, it is going to be a top-four scrap between Russell, the Red Bulls, and Leclerc there. Constructors-wise, Red Bull now with a 55-point lead over Ferrari, so they need to pull their finger out in the last couple of GPs. And Mercedes now a 10-point lead over McLaren as well there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back very, very soon with more f123 content a massive thank you to all of my youtube members and my patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work these things go much further than i think a lot of you ever realize and allow me to continue making content full time here on youtube so if you want to support me from as little as one pound a month and be featured on all of these end clips either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my patreon there's a link down in the description